Welcome, and thanks so much for joining me. I just want to take a few minutes to share a bit about the upcoming summer session of my group mentoring membership. The group mentoring membership is another offering I started offering last February. Um, it's in addition to my one-to-one -one mentoring and my public teaching. And the group mentoring membership is a small community of practitioners, uh, under 20 practitioners, that get together every week uh, to receive mentoring from me as well as to connect on the Dharma as a community uh, through each other's practice, through each other's challenges, as well as, uh, of course, receiving mentoring and facilitation from me in how to work with uh, all kinds of material. From February through April, we worked in a program called the Dharma Reboot, which was a program based in really working through the view, meditation, and conduct of the Mahayana path, uh, going through the core practices of Mahayana Buddhism, as well as additional somatic embodiment practices that I found extremely helpful over the course of, of my practice for the last 23 years. So the summer session, which is going to begin June 7th, is going to focus on one of the core Mayana texts of Tibetan Buddhism called the 37 Practices of a Bodhisattva. This text written by Togme Zangpo is in the category of a lojong or a mind training text, which really specializes in bringing the Dharma into our daily life, in working with challenges and adversity, both in our practice, uh, in our relationships, in our work, um, more or less how to be incredibly pragmatic with our Dharma practice, how to work with the core issues we struggle with to developing more compassion and wisdom in our meditation and in our life. So we're going to continue with weekly sessions as well as course content where we'll focus on not only the verses of this text, but really going into the deeper meaning, how it relates to awakening on the Buddhist path, how it relates to developing a more transformative meditation practice, and ultimately because it's a mentoring program, how it relates to your practice. So as I said, we'll be kicking this new summer session off on the 37 practices of the Bodhisattva starting in June. Uh, registration is going to open up May 27th, but you're welcome to email me if you're interested. There's a few spots left, and I welcome you. If this sounds like something that might be beneficial for your practice, feel free to reach out to me at scotttusa.com. I recently got to talk to two mentees, Shankri and Ali, about their experience in the Dharma Reboot group mentorship, which was our winter session. And so um, I hope you enjoy what they have to say about the program. I think it's much more interesting to hear from them than me. So without any further ado, uh, here you go. Thanks so, so much. Um, the purpose of this uh, conversation is just to talk with uh, Shankri and Ali about their experience in the three-month Dharma Reboot uh, group mentorship program. Uh, it was the first of its type that I launched, so they were kind of in the, wasn't quite a prototype, I wouldn't like go that far, but it was like the first time I tried to replicate what I do in one-to-one -one in a group and also have that be distinct from my public Dharma uh, classes and meditation classes. So they kindly accepted, thank you, to um, mm -hmm. join here and just, just talk about their experience a little bit and share with you all because uh, uh, I think we had quite a, I mean, you know, I'm not the participant, I'm the facilitator or, 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 you know, the teacher, but it really felt like quite a kind of cohesive and I don't know, like profound experience we all had, myself included, even though I wasn't a student. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I thought kind of like, how do we capture that and share that with other people who might be interested in joining? Because now I'm going to be offering it as a regular ongoing uh, program where the where group mentoring will just be like a monthly offering and uh, it will still be a small group. So I'm, I'm going to cap it at a certain amount of people, probably between 15 and 20 people. Um, we were 13 in, in our cohort, in our group. So I felt like that was a kind of the right yeah. around that number. I like that number. I think it's like just enough people for, uh, to get to know and like different perspectives, but also enough space time-wise for everyone to speak if they wanted yeah. to. So there'll be a few more, so we'll see how we navigate it. But but yeah, I just love if you guys have anything to share. I don't have any uh, specific questions because I just wanted to just hear from you. I guess 
maybe the first thing would just, if you have anything to share about it, because it was, it was three months. So it was a lot of things we went through, but just anything that comes to mind that, that you want to share with people. Well, Scott, first I want to say I'm very grateful to you um, to kind of, I guess I'm more of a beginner um, than other people. So I had an understanding of like shamatha with and without awareness, but I think that's where it capped. Um, so I was interested in like learning new methods to meditate and like uh, I'm still fresh with like Vipassana, but it was very helpful that I now started to be able to see things like it's like reality has a bunch of strands. I started being able to see what what's actually mine and what's someone else's strand. Mm -hmm. And um, to be able to see closer to objective reality is very helpful for me, especially as someone who's rather sensitive. Um, so I, I really gained a lot from managing my emotions and learning how to handshake them better. I think that's what really helped me. And it also made me be able to be more responsible for, for my stuff. Likewise, I'm, I'm very grateful for this space. I think, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I really loved the flow of um, the content that you brought. Um, I think, and I, I heard others sort of mention this as well, but it, it felt like such a good um, sequence to, um, you know, what we learned, what we practiced. Um, I think that even in, in weeks where it may have felt like overwhelming, either because of like life stuff, you know, maybe you don't have enough time for practice or to read or um, just like study Dharma, I felt like. Um, I don't know. I felt like the container was very supportive though. Um, just having the kind of accountability of the group felt really nice. Um, yeah, it was a supportive vehicle. I feel like, I don't know that I've been a part of like, uh, group mentoring in this way. Like I've definitely taken classes before and sort of after the lecture, there might be like a and a portion um, or throughout someone might ask the question. But um, yeah, I, I feel like I gained a lot just from hearing you interact with others and others also sharing their experience with wherever they were week over week. Um, I just feel like that alone was something I gained a lot from. So I was doing my men's group at the same time as this course, or they, they kind of overlapped with each other. And while the men's group seemed a little more like, let's focus on this topic and kind of dissect it, um, this felt like a transformation of the nature of my relationship with my mind. Mm -hmm. And um, it really felt like it was building me from the ground up, which I... I it's like so valuable and so maybe unheard of to, to like tackle life this way. Um, but it really, I think it, not to compare, but I really like what I needed was, was your, <laughs> this Dharma reboot program more so, I think. Um, because it just helps me like everything that I interact with now is different. After, after doing this, yeah, no. uh, it's very powerful. So the community piece, you, you you both mentioned it a little bit, but anything more to say about the community piece or um, anything around that? So interestingly, we had the um, accountability groups, and I think that was like a yeah. learning moment for us too on like how to how to work with that, um, both logistically and just like otherwise, but. Um, I think once our group started to like found like a piece, uh, a, a good cadence with it, I think it was really that itself was also supportive. I think um, mm. my group, at least we were only meeting like 30 minutes, but every week, middle of the week. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's just like, it's helpful to talk about these things with each other too. So I think like the, um, 
like the the actual sessions that we had with you was a lot of like working with you. Sometimes people might chime in with their own um, experience ought to build upon what someone would say. But I think the even just like the smaller groups was, um, I think, supportive too. And I think a lot of it was also based on what what we were specifically reading that week. So I think that was a yeah. good like, anchor. Um, but yeah, because I, I think we ended up like, I remember one week, um, you know, there was like a particular four line stanza, I think it within, a within an article someone had written and, um, just like the wording in that we started to like talk about that, like, well, one of us had interpreted it this way, another one of us had interpreted it another way. And then, um, because our sessions were on Wednesday, then later that Wednesday for our group mentoring, we brought it up. And then it was also nice to hear your perspective on like what we had sort of gathered to. So it's interesting because I think in a lot of uh, Dharma spaces, um, I've seen like different types of communities. So you see like um, a community that's entirely, you know, there's there's no like teacher per se um, or uh, someone that has sort of achieved a certain level within their own practice who's kind of like facilitating. Um, so that's, that's like one way of operating. I've also seen like a kind of a group form around a teacher as well. Um, sort starting off informally and then kind of becoming formal, but I don't know. I think I, I like this format because it's like, it's very explicit what's happening. And I think your role in it is also really clear. Like, um, I think from the beginning itself, you were like, um, what Kalyana Mitra, right? Is the, is the term. Oh, uh, yeah. in Sanskrit uh, for spiritual friend. Yeah. 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 And so I feel like you, like you're certainly like the, the teacher of the group or the facilitator of the group. But, um, I love that you're always pointing to other teachers as well. And like, whether it's something in Pache or someone else. Um, and so it just, it, it makes sort of like what you're sharing even more like grounded and rooted in something. Like it feels like it's like a part of a, a lineage. Um, even if it's like a compilation of different teachers or whatever it is, like there's still like a, a focus I feel like to it, um, which is really nice without it feeling like really rigid either. Like it also doesn't feel very rigid. Cause I think that's the other thing. It's like, it's not like everyone proclaims that they're like a Buddhist um, and <laughs> might be new or they might not, you know, may not be new to it. But I think yeah. that allows for like the Buddhist curious and then like the, the Buddhist serious <laughs> also. <laughs> I'm glad that came through because that was my intention where, you know, everyone's welcome. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it is explicitly the content, the meditation, where it's derived from, um, that's explicitly Buddhist. As, as a structure or path, you know, because that's what I'm trained in. And, and, and I guess to refine that further coming through Tibetan Buddhist lineage lenses. But, but as you said, I think, you know, Buddhism is the study of life, essentially. You know, it's, it's a structure or a path to study the mind and life. And so that's open to everyone. So I'm, I'm glad that came through. Yeah. I think you brought in a lot of warmth in general, um, with everyone, but I, I liked, that our community was able to have time just with ourselves and basically bring in more of that. Um, I really, I, I felt a lot of resistance initially I mean, mm. to like to meet twice a week, but I like once with the class and then once with our group. But yeah. over time, I noticed that it was very supportive. And um, like I started noticing that my practice was getting better not just because of the class but because i felt some type of like um responsibility to like be able to show up properly for the group yeah um, because i i wanted to be able to match the the energy that everyone's bringing so yeah it, it felt very it it helped with the idea of being like um process driven that you talked about it like i i felt that in action by <laughs> Just showing up, yeah. Maybe and having a song is really nice. I feel like you're always making it a point to share your experience, like your practice. So, you know, it's not like you're this perfect, whatever. Like you clearly, 
you know, even just like how you talk about how you deal with your own anger and stuff like that, like it, it makes it more accessible, I think, for, for other people. And it, it, you're not kind of creating a separation, I think, between yourself and others. Like, I feel like you, you do really um, try to relate or, or to, to be like, Hey, you know, I'm one of you. <laughs> and not, not, that I, not that I ever thought you weren't, but I think, you know, you're, your way of going about it is very um, uh, like humble, I guess, or like uh, you, like you're not trying to be something else, I think, which is really nice. My group is actually continuing to meet until we have our, uh, until we pick this back up again. But um, so I saw Clay today and we were talking about compassion um, and, you know, I think that, um, compassion was modeled well in the space because um it's like attending to like what's needed in the moment you know instead of um trying to like insert what you think might be right for this person or the situation um or nice or kind but like trying to break away from that so I think that that's like how how you were holding the space too. Like, it wasn't like you came in with like a set agenda. Um, you may have, I think for like the, the, like the little portion of lecture, or, um, Dharma talk you, you did. Or the content really. To the yeah. Content, the content yeah. piece of it. But I think for the most part, most of the session was, um, people raising their hand when they had, they had something they felt like they wanted to share. And then you kind of listening to that. And then, um, there being sort of a back and forth between the two of you. So, and that was always different week over week. And um, I think, I feel like you would like prompt it with questions specifically about the reading, but it wouldn't necessarily always revolve around that. But I think that was a good like base to kind of kick off with. Um, but yeah, I, I liked the flow of that because it felt more mm -hmm. like what is it that people actually need right now instead of trying to like force the content um, to match that. Yeah. And it's also funny because if most of the session was spent mentoring at the same time, I felt like there was so much content yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and not in a bad way. It was, it was good content. And so I, it's just interesting that like, you know, typically you might expect for that hour and a half to be content only, but I actually kind of like being able to go and marinate on it by myself or like talk about it in the group or, you know, whatever it may talk about with Ali or whatever. So I think it was, yeah, it's interesting that both was both was there. Going back a little bit to your last question, um, I had noticed that there have been many days where I was so tired and um, I would show up and you would start talking and my mouth would like kind of drop because I was like so in awe of what was happening. And I really enjoyed um, taking like anecdotal stuff and then like, putting it on top of like the Dharma. So like something very specific, like a topic that you're discussing and then seeing how it like, it just, it comes together with what's happening in my life. And I really liked what you had said about compassion that it like, I know it's simple. Like we all say we need to have compassion for ourselves, but I, I really felt something transformative when you use the example of how I need to have compassion for myself in situations where like I feel my mind starting to claim mm -hmm. um, in my interactions with like other people, like my job or, or whatever. Um, yeah, that's just what I wanted to, <laughs> to add. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think for me the the other thing I really enjoyed was the actual like practice uh, audio that you would share too. Um, that's right. Yeah. I think yeah, I think that that was really, um, I don't think I used it every day, but it was like good to like first hear you kind of walk through it and then to go off and do it on my own. Um, but yeah, and I, I, I feel like other people also in my group had talked about, you know, liking, you know, sometimes practices felt like a little not knowing how to approach it or not knowing, you know, what the step-by-step -step should be in, in working with it. So I think having your 
audio recordings was really helpful for that. And anything, just last things you all want to say? Or? I wanted to say that as an introvert, I really did appreciate not having to contribute if there was a day that I wasn't feeling available or, or up to it. I enjoyed being able to just listen and that kind of also brought me to a place that I felt like, not that I'm, you know, chasing stillness, but like it definitely helped, you know, with as chaotic as life is. By working with you, like I, I've been able to open myself up more. Um, so there's there's less fear of, of communicating. And because there's less fear, I also am not worried about fumbling on my words. So like, I feel like that's maybe why I can be like direct and like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much, Shankar. Any any last words, or we can we can end it too. You don't have to say anything if you don't have it. No, I'm just I'm excited to to start again. Um, wow. And yeah, we'd love to have you in the community. Do you want to join? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. you all. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time and just sharing your your genuine, heartfelt. Um, gratitude as well as kind of wisdom in your practice.